Okay, uh, so today I want to uh, talk about visualization. Some of those we actually already cover previously. Uh, so we're going to skip some of those sections uh, and then cover some new way you can do uh, data visualization. I also posted uh, lab 5 just a couple minutes ago. So you can check that here, lab 5. Some of the questions actually we already did that in the past, uh, kind of what we already cover. Except I think the new one is here, the split map. And also the last one is about open stream map. So it's in the recorded video. If you watch the video, if you haven't, uh, go back to watch. That actually tells you how to get data from open stream map. Yes? Yeah, use Mamba install OS MNX. Um, yeah, saw that in the video. PIP is fine. Uh, if on Windows, it might be challenging. So I would recommend using uh, Mamba install uh, hyphen C conda pros and then OS MNX because it use GeoPanda and some other packages that might be a bit challenging to install on a Windows operating system. So here, the last question about that. Um, I'm asking you to download data for a specified so for a city of your choice. Uh, it can be Knoxville, it can be any city you like. And then also download some other data. So you need a city boundary. And also in here, I'm showing the, all the restaurants in Knoxville, right? but it can be any others. You can download any data you like. Uh, you can be walls and think about anything here. So on the base map, everything can be downloaded. You just need to find the right way, find the right text to download it. If you don't know how to, just ask ChatGPT. I want to download data from OpenStreetMap using OS MNX and then show to see the code. It will be very similar. You just adapt to GMAP. Okay, so GMAP has just one line of code. You can download data for anywhere. But of course, don't try to download like okay download all the restaurant for the entire us it's not going to work because um the api has some limitations so it doesn't allow you to retrieve tons of data but for city usually it should be fine so you can say oh i want all the restaurants i want all the bars or maybe the roads or schools you should be able to do that so this give you some way uh, for you to download the data and so question four we're going to cover uh, in this lecture how to create a split panel map so you can swipe uh, left and right so they can compare different data layers and question one to three we have already covered in the previous lecture um so how to filter the data how to get the boundary you want and then how to clip that to your data so it should be pretty straightforward if you still cannot figure it out then you need to practice to go back to a previous lecture so essentially what you need to do is to filter the data so think about you have a tons of data First, you need to filter to, for example, in the last lab, we filtered to Knox, count, Knox County, right? How many Knox County in the US? All right, okay. And then, based on that, you use that to clip other data. So it can be satellite, it can be DM, it can be land cover, whatever you want, right? So this will give you kind of practice one more time. So after this week, you should be able to find any data, keep any data, filter any data, what is vector data, last data, it's all in the cloud. So basically, those any what's any movie you like, but how do you analyze the movie is another thing. Uh, then we're going to talk about next week. So this week we're just focusing on uh, how to actually visualize, how to watch it, and then how to maybe fine tune the color, and then turn on the monitor, change some settings so that you it, it looks good on the uh, on the screen. Okay, any questions? So after I release the lab, I would recommend that you just take a quick look and see, okay, in your mind, oh, this one, I know how to do that. Then, yeah, it's fine. You can wait until midnight to, I mean, 10 a.m., 9, uh, 9, 9 p.m. To, to do that. But if you think, okay, now the question makes sense to you, then you should start early, okay? And then talk to me or email me to my office, ask questions. But don't wait until like 9, 10 p.m. I won't be able to help you. I, I sometimes have other work that I need to do, so I won't be able to respond. But if you like start a couple of days earlier, then I might be able to help you, okay? So start early, take a look. At least you have a feeling like, is it going to be difficult or is it going to be easy? If it's easy, fine. Um, but if you like until 10 p.m. and you still cannot figure out, just like, okay, email me an extension. If you don't, I don't reply, it's automatically 
automatic approval. Okay, you just you just wait until next day. There's no point of uh stay late to do the lab. Okay. And by the way, I'll be out next Thursday, Friday. So next Friday, I will also record the video. But next Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday, I will be here and practice. There might be a quiz on Monday or Wednesday. Are we good? And what else? Me tell me about after we come back from the full break. And I will also be out during the full break. Uh, I think from the next next Monday until Thursday. So it'll be basically we have class next Monday, Wednesday, and then the following Friday. So it'll be I'll be out the whole week uh, during the full break, except coming back on I think early morning Friday, but we will be here to uh, teach. So I'll be at the, uh, what's that? Google. Um, they have a Geo for Good uh, conference. So I'll be teaching actually GMAP over there, uh, four hours at, at Geo for Good. And at the conference, they're going to release um, GMAP. So it will be officially on the documentation. So from moving forward, I hope that basically next month, if you go to the documentation here, platform documentation. So any example in the future, if you see uh, using Python, you'll be GMAP. So if you go to, it's not there yet, it's not live yet, but it should be pretty soon. If you come here, for example, image visualization, you're going to have some um, JavaScript here for that. So this, you'll be using GMAP. And so all the notebook, uh, Google Collab, they're also going to update. Okay, so in this course, we cover a lot of those, but it'll be easier in the future uh, just to integrate Gmail. And that's why it's already pre installed on uh, Google Collab. Questions? Yes? Uh, in your video, you said that when you use some module, or some module, you can add some of those things uh -huh. Are those data stored in your cache? Yes. So if you. If you um, download the data, you should be able to see, a, uh, I think, a case directory. So in those examples there, so in the video, is actually a GeoPandas. But actually, it's downloading the data as, uh, I think, the GeoJSON, what's the format? GeoJSON or file on your computer, and then read it as uh, GeoJSON. So I can quickly, maybe, where is it, uh, number four? I can quickly show you. So basically, GMAP like simplify that, but under the hood, it's using the OS MNX to, to do the, all the data downloading. So we can quickly maybe run this one here just to show you. Uh, it's going to generate some file on your computer, but you just don't need to. If you, for example, is reading a OS, um, it's a GTF, OSM something like GTF. So the GTF actually is reading the data from your computer. So take a look at this one. So I'm going to come maybe. Uh, where is it? How about this one? Okay, Knox view. So think about here OSM to GTF and then the city. Uh, maybe this one. Okay, let me try this one here. So OSM and then OSM from GeoCo. Uh, I, I might not have the package, so I might need to install it here. Oh, I didn't really install it because I recorded the video last time using this computer. So think about on the left side, it's going to easy. Okay, look at this. It's having a folder here. And then if you go inside, so this is the one. This is the one actually is being downloaded. So this is the new city here. This is like boundary. So in lab five, you're going to download for whatever city you like. It's the same idea. And if I double click it, uh, what's this? And you see the boundary, the city, geojson here. So basically, this is a file that's downloaded. Uh, let me open here. See if we can look at the file. Open in. The tab, you see, all right. So, this is actually a geojson downloaded to your computer, and then GMAP basically read that one as a geodata frame so that you can display on the map. So, everything that you run here on your computer is being downloaded to this case folder. So, I can try another one here University of Tennessee. I download all the buildings. So, what you need to do is to for lab five is to figure out what text you need to use to download. So, you'll be something like this, okay. Uh, bar, restaurants, um, any anything. So any point is usually called amenity. 
like I said, ask ChatGPT. Okay, I don't know all the answers. I ask ChatGPT to figure it out. So just ask what data you need to download and what text. So everything basically is uh, in here is that. So now you see, right? I download another two data layer here. And if you look at that, it's basically just a JSON file. So the JSON file inside is the GeoJSON. And that's why it's uh, right now you're downloading all the buildings, right? So here, I get all the buildings. And so you once you get the GDF, you can save to somewhere else. So for example, these are all the buildings, right? All the buildings for Knoxville, uh, the, the UT. And once you get the GeoData frame, then you can save to anywhere you like. So all you need is to come back here, remember the name. So it's GDF. And then just GTF to, okay. Why is it not auto complete? It should be GTF to this stuff. Yeah, it should be to file. Okay, it's just slow to file. And then, so here, you're just passing the file pass you want, right? So you can save to the count directory, or I can save, for example, to the case directory. So here I would say ut buildings dot. So the GeoPanels can automatically recognize what file for me you're gonna save. So it can be GeoJSON, you can be Swift file, you can anything you like. So I'm just gonna type GeoJSON and then run it. On the left side, pay attention. You should have the file saved in. Oops. Uh, what is this? Invalid. Ah. Oh. It might be some of the data in there is an uh, invalid file format, so to file. Uh, yeah, let me see. If it doesn't work, you might need to clean up. Yeah, I don't know what is. Oh, it's already it's actually here, but something might be wrong. Oh, it's already here. Let me double click here. Yeah, sometimes uh, the data. Inside there have some like the format is messed up. So when you're trying to save, it might swell something like this. So what you need to do is you need to filter the data to a small subset. Uh, I don't know the answer yet. It happens. So basically it's a huge database. So when people do the editing, sometimes it's messed up. Um, and you might not be able to save that. But it's actually here. If it's really something wrong, you can look at the original one. This JSON file is also um, a GeoJSON in here. Anyway, for now, I'm not asking you to monitor your data. Just do the simple, uh, simple visualization. If it doesn't work, try another city. Uh, if the, the data are clean, then you don't need to worry about it. But if it doesn't allow you to save or you throw some errors, then you have to fix that. Uh, it's a normal process of cleaning up the data because when you get some data, it's not going to be like perfect. And then you can do analysis directly on that. You might have to do some uh, clean up before you can do that. So again, try it out. If you can solve the problem, email to the class and then uh, see what solution to, uh, can fix the data issue. So we close this. And today I want to quickly go over how to do visualization. Some of those we have covered in the previous lecture. Uh, for example, the uh, inspector. And also here is also the plotting tool. If you want to use it, uh, it might also be useful, especially doing like um, hyperspectral or multispectral data. So this example here shows you two data layers. Okay, the uh, length data, seven spectral bands, and also the hyperspectral. So if you zoom in, you should be able to see uh, the details in here. It's all like uh, bright color because those mostly. Uh, that one has hundreds of bands, so it depends on which band you use. Also, you might need to change the color. If you want, you can um, you can change it. But the point of using this is that so we click and then where is it? the second one. Okay, so we click here. Then you can select the data layer. So because we so this data layer come from the name from here, right? Let's say uh, Hyperion. So these are the two data set. Once you select which one you want, you just hover your mouse on the map. And then you can click, it should get you the spectral signature. So this is in remote sensing, it's so-called spectral signature is a refractance of each, spect each spectral band. So why it looks like this? Why it looks like this? Why? So we may click another location. All right. So what's this? 
which which band D4 Say that again No blue is B1 the blue red Oh no sorry sorry blue green red near infrared so vegetation like has a high reflectance on near infrared that's why you see here this color the old red and I, I don't need to see it. when I click somewhere I can in my mind I know what it's going to look like right so you're going to see I'm going to click here it's going to look similar because that's where vegetation has high reflectance in near infrared uh short wave kind of it's also it's the next to the um uh, near infrared so if you are not quite sure you can always for example let me show you quickly if you go to google changing and then data set so you can look at some of the metadata so this one would be under lens here so all the lens data are pretty much similar and that's the early days so you'll be for example lens five and so if you go to going bands right so b1 b2 b3 5 7 and so this one is the near infrared and this one is a short wave infrared and another, uh, another short wave infrared so basically it's an entire electromagnetic spectrum so from the blue sometimes might be coastal blue it depends on what satellite you're using so usually for lens set we have six spectral, uh, spectral bands and also one thermal band but for sentinel they have more bands so you might need to actually look into the detail to see what does each one represent so if i click here uh, lens sentinel 2 uh, so base reflectance and you see the band so this one has for example aerosol blue green red and then they also have three red A's. so let's look at the documentation or just google or gbt you should be able to find out all the band uh, information okay so this is the um for vegetation right so if i click on water what do you expect to see what it will look like So what 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 would the the line the 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 the, the train look like? Even steeper. Uh huh. Are you sure? You'll be all the way down. I don't need to see it. So basically, water is only use it for the blue you can have some refractance or other usually just observe so when you have something that's the that sensor basically there's no refractance uh very minimal refractance for other spectral bands especially near infrared so near infrared if you want to detect water usually you want to use near infrared because it's all black there's no coming back it's all all the light being absorbed by water so for all the water features it will look like this it, I don't need to see it. It's all the all the way down. So blue band, if you want to study water quality, then you need the blue band because that's the only thing, only band right now you can see some, you can penetrate a little bit and have some reflectance. And other is just like a black hole. When you get the light get into into the water, it absorb, it is no return. So that's why uh water is like very dark features uh on the on the map. So if you really want to see, I can let me see if we can uh, I'm uh, Anyway, we don't have time, but you can just it's just display just one band, just di display the blue band or just display the near infrared band, and it can you can see the differences. The blue band you're gonna see the water maybe if, especially if the water has some water quality issues, you can see the differences. But if you just use the near infrared, it's going to all dark. So if you're starting water quality, okay, don't say you are using the near infrared. That means you you have no idea what you are talking about. Because near infrared is all absorbed, it's all the same. They cannot see the differences, right? So for water quality, you want to see the differences within different legs. And if it's all dark, what, what can you do? It's no information coming back. Okay, so this is for lens set. And there's also here a multispectral, uh, hyperspectral. So if you switch the bank, and then I click here on the, on, on the data. Right? So see this one has 200 bands. Uh, it's very dense uh, you can change the view how you want to make it to look like but right now i'm just showing you like i mean quickly how you see the train right similarly you can see the different lane cover of course you have your mouse outside there's no data okay so make sure that you need to have the data actually within low spectral bands so similarly uh you you see this one here right uh, spectral bands uh i'm not quite sure where what's the wavelength of this one but 
you can check the water, you can check the vegetation, you're going to see the spectral signature going to be uh, a bit different. So for vegetation, it might all look like this. So the near infrared is going to increase a whole lot. Um, you can check the Google Sync documentation to see the detail about like here we have 200, 200 bands. What, which bands are near infrared, which band and blue band or something. Okay, so that's about the, um, what's that called? Plotting. And there's another line here, you can actually set the option. So let me maybe, let me run this one one more time, just to show you uh, what this means. So by default, when you click, it's going to add uh, a point. No, no, doesn't add a point. So basically, just update the plot. But if I run this one, I'm setting this to add cl uh, marker cluster to two, and also overlay, right? So what this means is that it's going to overlay multiple lines, spectral signatures on here. So let me run this one just to show you what does it look like. So now. If I click on the map, right, it's going to add a point on there. Right, and another one, it's going to add another point. And it's going to stack on the same plot, right? Or I can just click here. You see, this is the marker cluster. So if I zoom out, it's going to cluster into uh, just one cluster. So I can add more points in here. Right? So if you want multiple of them, uh, you can do that. And I think there's a, uh, you can actually export the data. I forgot what function. So map. So, uh, I forgot the name, like, there, not this one. Under there, I think previously I had a function that allows you to, uh, oh, I think it's extract. Extract, oops. Yeah, extract value to points. So this is a function I previously added that allows you to because this, if you want to click some training sample data, right? So I click my mouse and then I get all the data, get all this. I want to export that one to my computer. So this one, let me see what file it uh, uh, set. So file name, or oh, CSV file, uh, CSV, right? So I'm going to say, okay, uh, double quotes. I can say uh, sample dot CSV. This is what happened, okay? And it's being saved to my com uh, my computer. Let me go back to the file. And over here, sample of CSV. That look right. So those are all the points that I just click on the map. And now you get the latitude, the longitude, and also the bank value for each of those. So this might be useful. You want to extract some data like point out of the map and then you want to save it as a CSV. So then later on, uh, you can... Um, you can do some follow analysis, right? So this is CSV. Uh, if I want, I can actually create a new map just to visualize the data that I just show you. So I can do, uh, what's that? Map equal to G map dot map. Oops. And this one we cover in the, oh no, not this one. So map, and then let me display a new map. So what I want is, for example, I want to display the data that I just add. I, I was exported. So you be map dot add. I think it's add points from x y. Okay, and then so all we need is just passing the file that was just downloaded. Right, let it, and then the data here you be double quote samples. Look, CSV. You can set the latitude and longitude. I think uh, I didn't right. So take a look. Now I have the points back on the map. This is where I click earlier, right? On the data, but now it's actually coming. So if I click my mouse, see? Right? Pretty cool, right? Just one line of code. There's no, uh, if you're trying to do, there are a lot of coding under the hood, but Gmail makes it easier. So you can extract pretty much any data you like. This to be useful if you're especially doing like lane cover qualification or you're doing some training. You need to get some points out. Or you can join some random points. For example, within the US, I can generate 1,000 random points and I'm going to extract the value out of that. Uh, this could be useful. And once you have the CSV, you can convert to vector data. You can um, do whatever you want. Questions? It looks easy, right? So now let's move to the next one. So this one is changing layer, layer opacity. We actually, we have used that before. So if you 
come here I just change it interactively so this is the nice thing about the uh, iPad leave that because you can it's it's dynamic so you can move things uh, back and forth and the other thing you want you can also do this um, so here right we have all the data layers so the map the data layers and I can show you if you want to change so gmap has all those interactive GUI they allow to make change interactively but you can also change programmatically so if you want to customize it you can do that so let me show you here layers right if you type map dot layers you have access to all the data layers in here so under the hood you can see how the layer uh what, what it looks like so here if you look at e uh leaflet layer google changing blah 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 and the layer name is the name here Google Sending, it should be a layer name. If not, so here, they say the last one, the last data layer is the one we add is the US states, right? So if you want to change the opacity uh, programmatically, that means when I do the coding and then um, change it, you can do it like this. So I'm going to method layers. Okay, here is a list. So I can access the last one. So take a look at this. Uh, map dot layer negative one. Uh, okay, about the error. So here, once you have this, I can, for example, visible equal to false. Okay, so pay attention here. Look at the map, right? So right now we have the US. Let me come out this one first. All right. So right now we have the U uh the US state boundary. So you want to run this one? See. You notice the difference so basically all the data layers on the map is a handle right because the negative one is the last data layer that we add so i turn it off or i can turn it back on so this is kind of equivalent to when i'm doing this turn the data layer on and off under the hood is actually executing a call like this to turn it on and off so right now it's on i can turn it off again right i can turn it back on and you can also change the opacity. So if I want, I can just opacity equal to maybe 0.5. Pay attention, okay? See the differences? See that? So everything on the map can be can be controlled. I can also remove it, right? So sometimes, although here in, in Zubit Lab, you can always like run the code block again and then remove the data layer. But if you like use your program runs a long time you don't want to do like just recreate it i can also do it here i can say map dot uh layers i can uh let me show you here i can equal to map dot layers okay negative one so take a look at this one i basically right now all the map data layers is a list and to the negative one means i don't want the last data layer so what this one is doing that i have all the map all the data layers i i don't want the last one so basically overwrite so if i run this one take a look okay see it's gone so now the data layer is no longer there it's gone i can if i run again what happened this one will be gone okay so you can continue to do that so it's up to you what you want but my point is that everything on the map then you interact with those icons under the hood there's a line of code or multiple lines of code actually to do that so this is one way you can remove the data layer but you can also um remove your specific data layer so one more here right here we have two data layers for example here i want to remove the srtm do you know how to do that yeah, you can minus two, or you can find my name, uh, find the layer by name. So I can show you here. You can do it like this. I can say layer equal to map dot find find layer. Okay, and then so here you can pass in the layer name. So it be S R T M E M, right? Take a look. Okay. So now actually I have a handle to that map, and then you can show okay layer. Uh, then you can do it like this map dot remove remove layer okay and you just pass in the data layer so basically this is where it points to that layer so this one this one take a look 
Oh, it's not working. S R T M D M. Oh, S R T M. Good. Okay, so it will be S R T M, right? Now run this one. You see, it's gone, right? So you can have a pointer to the data layer. You can manipulate basically any data layer on the map. You can manipulate it, or you can update it uh, if you want to. And single band, multi band, we are already covered this. Also vector data and laser. We cover the laser. Right, laser is also here. Have some built in. Uh, you can try it out. It'll be pretty simple. Just one line of code. If you are uh, using some common one, and let me show you here. Right. NLCD right lane cover and you can see this one this this uh, laser basically is created by using this one line of code here mac dot add laser and then the title so what you need is the built in laser NLCD so this name is coming from one of those okay it's coming from one of those and the title here is the one showing up at the lower right corner here uh, this one okay so this is the title so you can customize what you want by default is just called a uh, legend but you can change the title if you want and also you can customize the legend so let me show you this one here it can be a dictionary okay like this so i can change it yeah i think i covered this before right you can change it like it can be a dictionary of uh label and color okay so on the right here is the hex color code of course, this number, this one, you want to use the same one that you used to do the classification because uh, the data layer here, the NLCD already have all the color customized. So you want to uh, just use it. And the last method is to use the so-called Earth Engine uh, class table. So what this is doing here is that if you find any data, for example, let me show you uh, ESA for cover. So I'm just showing you how you, you quickly replicate the the data on Google Sending, and then this is it right now has 200. So let me show you here. I uh, assume that you find some data on the Google Sending data catalog that you want to use, and there's a color table in here, right? And you want to add a legend. So by default, it will just like this, right? So you copy the code snippet, then you come back to here. And we create a new map, okay. What is this? Let me copy this one. Crazy, I don't want to type. So here, create a new map. Okay. So once I have this, then I come back to here, click this one. Uh, I need to come back to copy again. So copy the code snippet. So these are all JavaScript and then paste on board. Okay, so I have this. Control C, Control V, uh, I will not Control C. So we come back here. I hope it works. All right, easy, right? So now I have the data. So the problem is, okay, how do we add the laser to the map, right? So if you go back to the previous one, so the ESA, that one is a very commonly used. I actually already have that. So be here, ESA will cover. Right. So all I need to come here, copy this one, and come here, new line, make. So add legend and then you'll be viewing agent equal to control V run. See, right? Isn't that it nice? Now you have this color showing you what uh they look like. But if it is a data set that is there's no built-in legend, then you have to actually create it by yourself. Right? So you can either use the one that we saw earlier here i right, provide a dictionary but usually i would recommend using this one so this is actually better uh so let me show you how you, you actually do that so let me call this copy this one okay and then come back here but of course assume that you don't have this one okay so what we are doing here is to convert the ee class table to a dictionary and then passing a dictionary into the add laser function so pay attention this is where you get this one so i'm going to come back to here and then right so on earth engine most of the data page if there's one like link cable or just one band they might have this class table so all you need to do is come here select the table and so see 
come back to here and then define this one as a variable and they have three quotes three quotes basically it's treated as a, a string literal and inside you can have single code you can have double code because sometimes you might have some data if you have single code in there you can have single codes outside because you need to pay but this one is is you can use whatever you want so control v you see and then find it okay so you don't have to manually to create a dictionary because otherwise you need to transform into something like like you know this one like in here you need to type and then colon and then this color colon it's a it's very time consuming so i would usually recommend that just go there and then copy so let me try maybe another data set just to show you um how about this maybe find some other link cover data so here i'm going to home all right, so you can go here to find any data you like for example link cover and inside there i can see what data do i like how about uh how about this one okay okay look at this so this one oh this one is too much the 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 the, the, the description is going to be overwhelming so you want to have something like simple so there is not like too much yeah this one is also very long oh my goodness like 50 classes how about this one you see the color here oh there's no color this is multi-band so it doesn't work you have to find the one that i can actually demonstrate how about maybe this one please have something reasonable <laughs> okay this one looks fine but it's, you see the laser is just way too long but this is a demonstration i can still do that but it's going to be very messy so let me copy this one of course you need to follow examples just to add the data layer first but i'm just showing you you can add a legend uh, without any data so here i'm going to come back to where is it Not stable yeah something like this so i'm going to just paste here not good the legend is going to occupy the entire one but you see it, it works you just need to after copy paste you might need to remove it so for example you say okay uh evergreen forest and then you remove all the other stuff that you don't like right something like this but i can customize it at least you don't need to you see now it's much shorter so you just do it one by one uh it's at least i think it's faster than you just create a dictionary and then uh, colon and then uh, copy the color this can save you some time but don't at least make it reasonable don't make it too overwhelming all right so that's about uh the legend and sync color bar we already did that right but you can do it for terrain cool warm something like that so I'm, we don't have time but i'm gonna go cover uh next one display labels so this one uh, might be useful you're going to show some labels on the map so like i said google changing is you can display vector data it display raster data but google Synergy is not a software for creating nice looking maps okay it's mostly for doing computation so in arcgis or qgis you can okay let the vector data layer and then turn, turn over a column you can show the label that's very easy right that's very challenging in google google Synergy because it's not designed for that but i do add some functions for example add labels that allows you if you want to add some uh stuff on the map so take a look at this right now you can see the label but if you look at closely you might see there's a a dot somewhere in the label so basically what i did is to add a point as a marker and then show the marker it's, it's complicated it looks like something very easy in desktop yes but it's not that easy uh, on this and the point come from uh you need to have the location basically you have the same central location the latitude longitude from the freezer collection and then you specify what you want uh, anyway basically it's not very convenient and also the label size doesn't change right so you do like this not good okay if you zoom out uh, zooming fine so like i said uh, at least you can do it but not so good you can remove the label if you want to What's it again? 
export the data. What do you mean export? Like export. Oh, you can just take a screenshot, just like what you do for all the lab assignment. But if you want, you can use ArcGIS. Okay, so you can pull the data into ArcGIS or QGIS, and then create you can create a map from there. Although we haven't covered it yet, but uh, it's doable. And uh, let me see here. Uh, let me quickly go to some of those image overlay. So this one is for uh. adding a static image on the map so if you want like sometimes add a logo or something you can just use map dot add image you can also do that but there's another way so called image overlay and so this is one thing that you might want is for example yeah i think that should get a video overlay so you can have a map you can have a video actually on top of that so take a look at this pretty cool right so you can have a static map and you can have a video mp4 or web uh m format Basically, the uh, Google uh, video format. So you can also have a GIF format. So if you want to have something like cool, uh, showing people, then this might be uh, useful. Okay. So for example, next one to show you this is the this two one um, are useful. So the split map uh, is used. Let me turn this one off. Okay. And so the split map. Take a look at this uh hybrid i might have removed that let me try the other data layer so uh split map so just create a map and then map dot split map and then you have a left and right so here i can try maybe uh hybrid doesn't work anymore because uh gmap has removed all the google maps so you cannot use google map anymore so right now no question this is the older version so if the newer one you be installed on google collab you won't see the google map and the google satellite uh, before google sending text over the gmap package uh and this like gray area is good for testing but google doesn't allow you to use the google map outside the google maps platform and so here i can maybe g for imagery or maybe uh here for uh topo map and then the right layer i can have Open topo map. Topo. So take a look at this one. I hope it works. Okay, it works now. So what this is doing is that you can create, you can have two data layers, uh, one on the left, one on the right, and then you can have this slider too. You can like do it like this. So it allows you to compare the data layers side by side. This one is particularly useful for doing disaster. Uh, management like you want to show people what's before and after so for example here i can zoom in uh the only downside right now is that you cannot drag the map it used to be able to but the plugin break the stuff so right now uh you cannot drag the map you can only zoom in and zoom out so um so you can for example zoom to here and then you can have the layer on and off so the name is coming from all the base maps so what you want is for example here let me show the map first and then you go to uh the base map okay just you just grab any names from here and then you can put it one on the left one on the right and then it should just work okay so here for example i can say uh nlcd 2019 corners lane cover and one on the left one on the right so let me show you be like this So let's say you want to have two data layers, one on the left, one on the right. Okay. So I'm going to use NLCD. NLCD. And keep in mind, this has nothing to do with Google Sending. It's just base map data layer. So it's not Google Sending. So NLCD, uh, bonus, length, cover. Okay. 2019. And then the other one, maybe 20, 2001. So I'm going to do here. 2001. Run this. I hope it works. What happened? Oh, I'll come it out. Okay. Okay. So here, run this one again. See? Update it there. And if you want to zoom to a specific location, so when you create a map, you can pass in, for example, i pass in the center here, uh, 40, negative 100, and then zoom label equal to 4, then you should center there, right? Nice. 
So now I can grab and buy. It's hard to see, but if you zoom in to the famous Las Vegas, you should be able to see the changes, right? On the left side, on the left side is uh, 2001. See? Can you see the changes? Yeah, you can export as a uh, um, HTML. HTML, you can ex save as a map. So here, if you want, I can run this one, a new code block, and then you can just tap uh, map doc save. And then here, I can say nlct doc HTML, run it, and come back to here. Refresh, All right? NLCD. Uh, if it doesn't work, you might need to use the volume. So let me quickly show you my uh, NLCD. The iPad Leaf Lab sometimes has some issues with the. Oh, it works? Not working? Hello? It's not coming up. So if this is the case, if you want to export the map, uh, usually I would recommend using a volume. So I can quickly show you. We have time, a couple minutes. So here, uh, you do this. Let me add a new code block. So I will do import gmap dot folium map as I mentioned at the beginning of the semester. So folium is is one way, but you are less likely to run into issues when you're exporting the map. So import folium as gmap. Okay, run this one. Run this one. It's the map should be the same, except right now you don't have the toolbar and other stuff. But when you export the map, usually this is usually should work. Okay, so if you come back to here. Now I have this, open it. See? So now this is a HTML. Oops. Yeah, it's, I mean this but this stuff is buggy. So I think it's because of the the plugin that use this one. Uh it's has some problem. It should not. Uh they have not fixed it. But anyway, so this is what if you want to, you can do that. But I'm gonna refer it back to here. Okay, so this one right now is not the best map, but you can also use Google Searching Data Layer. So look at this one. They look pretty much the same. So these two data layer should be exactly the same, except that right now this data layer is not a base map. It's a real Google Searching Data. So what we do here is to like, just like traditionally how you add this data layer to the map. Right now you have this variable pointing to this image and then you call this function gmap.ee tie layer so what this one is doing basically is a tie layer so there's a uil so now when you create a map so you are using the google sending data layer rather than on the base map and there's also a close button here uh, at the lower right so if i close it it's gone it's going back to the original map without the base map so just look at this example and it can change to any data layer you like okay so all you need is just this is a google sending image or it can be a physical collection, or it can be a vector, it can be anything. Then just call this function. How you so for example here, if I don't use the uh the split map, let me show you this example. How you convert something from the traditional way and then use that. So here, right? E the image and then the layer and then blah 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 blah. So this usually will be if I change this one, just map dot add layer. You see the differences? And now I'm just remove this one. So if you already know how to add the data layer to the map, then you can basically just change two lines. Everything just works. So let me turn this off. See? So now I'm just using adding two data layers to the map. So 2019, 2020, right? And you see how I actually converted, right? So all you need to do is just Change this one, change to a layer equal to G, uh, gmap.ee tile layer, and then do the same thing, and then add this one, right? So there's only three lines of code need to change. If you already know how to add the data layer, you know how to create a split map to do that, okay? And the last example is the um, uh, link map. And this one, if you want to like have multiple maps together, look like this. So it can be two by two, three by three, four by four. This one only works on Jupyter Lab. It won't work uh, on Google Collab. So if you try to do that on Google Collab, you move this one, it doesn't move. So this is basically allows you to fit a multiple view of an imagery, right? So the same data. So this is the same image. Basically, this, uh, we are visualizing the same is, image 
with different bank combination, right? Uh, first color, natural color, whatever. And then you have a label here showing at the uh, top right corner. And then just use the link map and two rows, two columns, and the height of the map, right? And how you want to visualize that. Look at a good example. You can customize to other data uh, layer you want. But this is nice because if you want to see what bank combination is better for visualizing this specific data set, then this might be a good example. Okay, so that's what I want to cover. And uh, the remaining, we will do that next week. Okay. And that's over today. See you next week.